Okay, Brian, with that as a backdrop, welcome to the show all the way from South Africa. <laughs> it's great to be with you. I love it. Now, just, uh, just by me reading the bio that I just did, the word human behavior is obviously super broad topic. I can't wait to dive in just because as a backdrop and some context, when we teach investors around North America, the mindset pillar, so to speak, tends to be the biggest challenge, the biggest headache, the biggest thing to work on. So I'd love to know, I'd like to go back a little bit and say, you know, how did you get into this space? Kind of the what, when, and how, just kind of peel back the green curtain a little bit so they get to know you a little bit. Um, yeah, it, I think it, it started, for me, it was, I, I grew up, like I suppose a lot of people in our kind of space, and we've all had our challenges, but I grew up um, dyslexic uh, with ADD, I had an alcoholic mother who died when I was young. So I was like a very lost child feeling. And I, and I think when I think back to my childhood, I, I had zero self-esteem, I always used to think. Like I really had no confidence, which is obviously a primary element in, in personal development as a whole. And, um, and it took me till I was 26 when I was exposed to this crazy guy from Holland called Emil Rotterband, who was a protege of Tony Robbins that I ever got introduced to this concept of like personal development or anything to do with being able to grow yourself. And so for me, as a, on a personal journey perspective, um, you know, I got to, uh, I got to read Tony's book, uh, you know, Unlimited Power. It was the first sort of book I read at the age of 26. And I was sort of moved that it was like for the first time anyone had ever said to me, hey, you can actually change your life. You can do something different. You can take control. Um, and I think like many people, I always had a little instinct, a little voice about, well, I, I'm definitely worth of more, worthy of more than what I'm actually sort of seen in my life as a whole. But, um, you know, so you live on that kind of thread of hope, but you're not quite sure what to do. You're going with the flow. You know, 20s are a funny time, obviously. So, yeah. and, um, and that sort of switched me on to this whole idea. So I remember as a child that couldn't learn, as I work very closely with Dr. John Martini, who's a good friend of mine, we talk about value. So not having that value of not learning because you struggle and have an avoid, so to speak, of not being able to learn as a child, and then suddenly learning that you can grow from a personal perspective, I think is where the journey started for me. Now, you know, I sometimes joke, I don't think I was very clever, because it took me a really long time before I could really manifest something different in my life. It took me probably till about 2012, before I really kind of switched on. But I guess, you know, everything happens in its own way. So I was on my journey growing, trying, challenging. Remember, I still had a very low self-confidence. Um, so it was a slow, progressive process, but I was exposed to so many incredible opportunities. It just took me a really long time to realize there was a reason I was being exposed to all these incredible things that had happened in my life. Um, and anyway, long, long and the short of it, uh, entrepreneurship was always a key thing for me. I started my first business young. I witnessed my father make success, struggle, make success, et cetera. And, um, and I think for a lot of us who end up in the educational game and the sort of knowledge-based game, we're, you know, we like to, people sometimes like to coin this, you know, like we're there, altruist, we're trying to help everyone. It's absolutely rubbish. We really, we're trying to help ourselves. I sucked at entrepreneurship. Um, now, when I say I sucked, like most people suck, you know, like I had a, I had lots of businesses, but they never really made profit. I worked my backside off in them. They sort of maintained a lifestyle. Sometimes they did worse than others. Uh, it was just this kind of like drag. And so I really was fascinated why entrepreneurs struggle because I'd witnessed the, you know, the, the, the outcome of it as a child, but also was repeating the same things myself. And so I went on this journey to learn. So now trying to succeed in business and thinking that the mind has no relation, as we all know now, you know, the mind is the master manifesto. So ultimately everything we experience is coming from this crazy stuff. I remember I was getting so upset about this because I thought like, they say it's my mind, I'm gonna change my mind, but I don't know how to change my mind. It's like, I'm trying and nothing changes, right? It is actually quite a challenging thing, but it took me a really long time as a journey. So it's, you know, I think like most great teachers would say, you know, it's our journey of trying to find the best version of ourselves, trying to find a way that we can actually become what we know we are probably worthy of in life, that then enables us to share that with other people. And I think, you know, there's, there's a lot of people in the knowledge-based game, but we know probably a lot of similar people that we've grown up learning from and what have you. And we all know that, they talk from an experience um, and it wasn't an easy experience for any of them. And I think that's the key thing. So, you know, to come back to your question, mindset is the dictating factor. My saying in entrepreneurship was always, 
It's not about what you do. It's far more about who you become. So yes, we can learn all the right things to do, but just because you know what to do doesn't mean that they will manifest the outcomes you want if you have an issue up here. And so it's that combination of you need to do the right things, but you need to be the right. And um, it took me almost until, you know, into, well into my 40s before I started to really manifest outcomes to prove it to myself. Yeah. I think I knew a lot of stuff right for a long time, but you know, especially in entrepreneurship. I mean, now I have multi-million dollar businesses and I have an incredible team that works for me. And I, I just came back from, you know, a place called Langaban, which is an hour up from Cape Town, where I go almost every week. I, I have a, an incredible sense of freedom. You know, I teach this concept of wealth being in freedom. And so I have a business that's profitable and helps generate wealth. I have a business that I absolutely love. I have a team that are like a family to me of 19 people who love what they do and collectively do some amazing things. And I have... Um, this ability to not have to work as much in the business as most people would, but really to focus on the stuff that I love. And I, I kind of joke that I've been teaching real, what I call the real entrepreneur for about 15 years now. And it feels like only the last few <laughs> that I've actually yeah. called myself a real entrepreneur, but uh, it's kind of a weird experience, but yeah. So that's, I'm trying to give a short version of a very long story. <laughs> no, I love it. I, when I had Brian Tracy on, he kind of inserted into my, into the conversation similar to this. He said, he said the same thing. He said, embrace the suck and, you know, it's going to suck. And, but he gave a seven year cycle. And he said, yeah. cause I used to talk three years to my students and he said, no, 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 it's seven years for everyone. You're going to suck. And then you're going to feel like you're grinding. And then you might have success at the end of the last couple of years. Do you agree with that? I, I kind of love it. It's it's yeah. I know Brian very well. It's the seven years, the 10,000 hours of mastery. Um, I, I, when I actually interviewed Brian years ago, I was at the seven years and I was sort of thinking I was becoming successful, but it was far from it at the time. Um, so, so in real sense, it took me a bit longer, but you know, it all depends on how you define success. And the truth is at the end of the day, it's always the journey, right? Apologies for that. Don't know. I forget it rings. I like turn my phone or forget it rings on the computer as well. <laughs> <laughs> you don't, um, it, it, you know, I think the key thing is that, you know, success is a journey, not a destination. It's kind of a cliche, but it so is. And, you know, there is no, like when we talk about wealth, meaning freedom, there's no out, there's no end to wealth or meaning or freedom. And, you know, all the great, incredibly successful people that I've got to know, be it financially, be it in leadership, be it in whatever it is, they, they all just keep pushing their vision out. There's no, you know, final outcome to what they're trying to do with their lives as a whole. Brian's one of them as well. I've known Brian now for about seven years. And, um, and I think at the end of the day, you know, I mean, he's always been a great teacher of continuous educational development, you know, lifelong learning and committing yourself to that. So yes, there's the studies that talk about the seven years. And I think that in real terms, you know, we shouldn't be telling people you can become an overnight success. I always joke and say, take, you know, it took me 15 years to become an overnight success. We've heard yeah. some of the quotes by many successful people, but, um, but if you're not loving it, and you know, I, I guess for many years I did a lot of things, but after less than normally within the second year, I'd be dropping out and moving on because I was just bored and it was not in. I guess it's and you know it's that persistence, it's that perseverance that really dictates uh, the outcome as a whole. Yeah, quick side story: you said twice about the 15 years it took you. Um, when we started this, uh, I'm 55 now. My wife said to me everything's firing on all cylinders. And she said, it took you 50 years to figure this out. I mean, it, so that, that's the comment I got. <laughs> yeah, here. exactly. I'm 51. And it's like, oh, you know, it, it, it definitely, I actually think my 50th year, and ironically, like like you know, 2020 was my 50th year. And 2020 is like perfect vision. And I had this the whole thing in my head about vision 2020 and I'm going to have this incredible 2020 and then we start 2020 firstly I'm just going to be honest like I wasn't doing that well in 2019 so it carried on into 2020 and then COVID hits and I'm like and I had an events company for goodness sake and I'm like well that's it you know that's kind of like just wrapping it all up for us <laughs> and uh it was it was actually quite hilarious but it turned out to be one of the the most amazing things and my dad who you know Touchwood is still alive at 83 you know, he said, it's funny because I witnessed him as a child succeeding. And I, I, I remember his 50th birthday really well. And I wasn't close to my dad. I'm a lot more closer than I am now than I was back then because of various issues we went through. But 
but you know he he flew his friends in from all over the world he had this huge sort of 50th birthday lunch just to thank everyone and he had sort of he said you know i've achieved all the financial goals i set for myself and i'm 50 years old and of course as a 18 year old i thought that was really old but you know when you get to 50 you realize yeah it's still pretty young yeah but um, kid now yeah, it's, uh, it's but you know, I speak to him now. He says, Brian, it feels like because he also started entrepreneurship really young. He says, it feels like up until 50, it was just he was doing well, he was getting better, he was listing companies, making millions, and it just felt like it was downhill from 50. And I said to him, it's funny because it feels like up until 50, it's just been one big struggle, you know, and yeah. now it just feels like it's going uphill from 50. I, and I said, well, maybe I can do the reversal of you because he didn't end. Right, you know, he he lost most of it. I mean, he's relatively comfortable, but uh, I mean, relatively as in compared to what he should have been, no, nowhere near. Yeah. Um, because he didn't, you know, he didn't understand, or he didn't really practice the game of wealth versus reinvesting into high risk businesses and eventually, you know, falling down with it. But um, yeah, who knows? There's life after fifty. But for all the youngsters that are listening, <laughs> it's okay. You don't necessarily have to wait till fifty. <laughs> So, so let's do this. Let's kind of, now I'd love to speak directly to the to Wicked Smart listeners and go, all right, like there's new investors in there. There's investors that are very close to us that do deals with us. And if I could just like seriously feel like shaking them sometimes to let them know how important the mental piece is. You and I both went through all kinds of challenges and here we are. So how, let's go back to the beginning, like for them, if they're going through some crap now, many people are with COVID, um, the, where do they start? Like, there's a lot of cool stuff we said, but where the heck do they start? If they're, whether they're young or old, they had some headaches, do they put it behind them? Where, where do they go next? Like, any thoughts? Yeah, I think, I think there's three things, you know, that, I, and, and I, I guess, like you, I've really had the privilege of reflecting on my own life and the many challenges and realizing what are the things that really made the impact. So I always start, and I mentioned Dr. John Martini earlier, who's a dear friend of mine. Um, you know, he wrote a book called The Values Factor, it's his 30th book or something, but, but it's, um, he, he, I've known John for, I don't know, close to 12 or 13 years now. He's always spoken about this concept of values. Now, I always joke, it took me five years of listening to him before I actually bothered to go and figure out what he was really talking about. And this is an, a teacher I've always had huge admiration for, hence maybe why it took a bit longer than most. But but John, you know, talks about values and values in real definition are the things that are truly most important to you. And they're not things that you choose. They tend to come from your voids. Your primary values come from your void. So I mentioned struggling to learn. So learning became a value. Connection is my highest value because having a very disconnected family, mother who drank herself to death at 17, a brother who I wasn't close to and went overseas when I was young, a dad who was busy trying to sort my mother out and then his businesses and wasn't really around. You know, I felt completely disconnected. And this was one of my greatest voids, not feeling like I belonged to anything. And um, and then, you know, travel ironically became a value uh, as part of that story, not because I just love travel, but because I really was trying to run away from things, but I always had to come back. And yeah. I wanted that ability not to have to come back. It's just voids are negative things. And I mean, we often have to go and deal with the psychology of those voids, you know, for, for the, the own context. I've had to go through a lot of stuff to really get in touch with where they came from and, and letting go of a lot of things rather than necessarily, you know, gaining things. I think there's a lot of power to say what we let go of is sometimes more powerful than what we bring in. But um, when you identify those values, so mine is connection, learning and travel. And if you look at what we do today with Real Success Network, we connect people and learning journeys on a global basis. It's like, this is what we do. And um, when you align your life, both in terms of what you personally do, but also with the business, to those values, you engage what we would simply call the law of attraction, which John, of course, was in the secret, but never got to speak about this because he was a doctor. So they just asked him all the, or just put all the medical stuff up. But it's really, how do we, you know, literally get life to help us? How do we attract positive circumstances, opportunities, um, and, you know, and, and people into our life versus negative? And we got to get that when we've been beaten down. And I thought for a long time, I used to literally almost buy into the beliefs of, that's it. You know, it is a choice before you come here. You suffer, you suffer, you suffer. Okay, you can succeed. You suffer, you suffer. And I'm just one of the sufferers. You know, I, like I, I, you sometimes just want to concede. It would be so much easier. Yeah, you know, be, yeah. just alcohol, drugs, have a lot of fun, forget about anything. You know, it would be so much easier sometimes. But, um, but the truth is that, you know, I, I realized when eventually figuring this out, um, it was 2012, I still remember clearly when I identified my values and started to mold my life there. That's when everything really changed. Because 
you, you, you know, two things happen. Number one, you start to really recognize opportunity and, and, and you start to have a gratitude um, for the, the pain that you've been through because you start to realize that who you are authentic to who you are or, or you know, in congruence with who you are today, that's how you're going to live your, your greatest life. Mm. And so therefore, there's no negativity. There's no oh shame. This happened to us. And I think this is also a common story of truly successful people is that real realization that I'm blessed and I wouldn't change anything in my life because it's made me who I am. And to me, that was the cornerstone. Absolutely the first and most critical thing was to get real as to who I was, you know, who I was. So we call it like know yourself. I mean, there's all those common terms, know thyself. But it's, it's you know, to be really authentic because authenticity is being true to yourself, not true to anyone else's values. And there's so much. And John is a genius. In, I mean, this is a little thing that John teaches, but it's one of the most critical things because he is truly a genius in his essence to research and study. But uh, it's such an, a profound thing to learn when you get it because it's not only powerful for you, but when I was coaching entrepreneurs for years, the first thing I had to know, and I had to know, because a lot of people do the exercises, but don't even believe their own values. But I had to know, I had to believe, I, need, I needed to know the stories, I needed to recognize in a person why this was important to them, because how can I help them, guide them in their business, if I don't know who they are and what really is important to them? Instinctively, I'm just going to relay what's important to me so this that, that was to me probably one of the most critical things so i highly recommend you know john demartini go and get the book the values factor there's many other people that teach it as well but i think john's one of the greatest um you know then continuous educational self-improvement was another critical thing for me and that's been studied a study actually showed that i think 86 percent of the wealthiest people in the world believe in lifelong lifelong educational um you know personal or self-development uh, and, and I think that that's, you know, we all know how critical that is. And some people go like, yeah, but you know, this and that. I'm saying, no, it's a journey. And when I'm down and when I'm struggling and when I'm feeling like the world's against me, I've got, you know, on my phone, I think I have about 400 or something, um, you know, audio books and audio programs. And I have, if I'm in the car, I'm just listening. You know, I just know there's a number of teachers that will just wake me up, you know, either just with something I've heard a hundred times or with something new. And we're blessed with a, an endless amount of education. Your only challenge is to be selective and learn how to be selective to learn from the right people. So in the old days, maybe it wasn't that you know hard because there was only a few, but now we have to be selective. Um, and then I think, you know, so, so being authentic, being true to yourself, uh, continuous educational self-improvement, and then, and, you know, the great sort of frame of Tony Robbins, um, raising your standards you know, really, you know, only you can demand more out of your life. And it's not good enough just to want stuff because everyone wants it. Everyone wants, if we just, if that's all we needed, we'd all have everything we want, yeah. obviously. Yeah. But yeah. that, that you know, it's hard to kind of explain, but that, that complete shift from a mind perspective where it's no longer, you know, should I, it's no longer an argument in your head. It's no longer an, all the excuses that come out. It just becomes an absolute, it has to happen. I'm going to find a way, make a way, and that's it. And that to me comes, they all interlink. So they, they come from those journeys. That's been my journey. And if I look at whatever I've achieved and whatever I go through in life, um, I, I truly believe I'm blessed because I live in those, those kind of spheres. I'm not blessed because something externally blessed me. I'm just blessed because I figured out like everyone that there is, you know, there's a path inside us that will enable us to become, um, you know, to do something wonderful with our lives. And it, but it dictates about us becoming the best version of ourselves. And so those three things became critical components to me. Cool takeaways. I, you mentioned like John, you mentioned Brian, you mentioned Tony. I'd love to know your thoughts on how important association in general is because I, I've been screaming about this, just association, like who you hang out with, who you rub elbows with, not just the audio book, but how important is it for, for, these, for the Wicked Smart listeners to know about association? Thoughts on this? You know, I think it was great Jim Rohn that said, uh, you know, you become the five people you hang out with the most. And yeah. it's very difficult to argue this theory. And I found no real contrary, you know, theory to it. I, I, I think that I can recognize my own life, um, you know, when I've pushed myself into other circles or to get connected with other people. And you've got to understand, guys, this doesn't have to be your best friends or anything. You know, that's crazy. But right. association is the right term. It's not good enough just to listen or learn from them. That to me is an important ingredient, but getting to actually know them and creating some level of connection. And I like to think as well, sometimes don't be silly and try and get to the top. 
Just look for anyone that is one or two steps ahead of you and associate with them. And what, it's just almost natural. And if you end up with two or three of those around you, it's almost natural for you to be you know, lifted into that sphere. So to me, it's critical. I mean, if you don't, if you choose to associate yourself, because obviously we sometimes have to, you know, we have to move on from certain people. I always say, you know, I don't stop loving people, like be it friends, family, but I do choose how much time I spend with people, right. um, you know, based on my own journey and, and how it serves me. And, and it might sound selfish, but that's the whole point. So I think the association is critical and, and being connected with the right people and constantly looking to be connected with, 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 you know, better is like maybe the wrong word, but just people that are a few um, is definitely something that you, you, you know, you, you want to make as a primary element of your success. Now, so let me ask you this, um, Brian, you, you mentioned audio, like you'll go reset. I, I'm using that word reset. That's not what you said, but is there anything else where you have a little bit of a suck day or a challenge or a frustration and you have another reset of some sort where you, you go into a zone or you meditate? I don't know. What, is there anything else that you do? <laughs> Chris, um, I, I, I'd like to, <laughs> I think it's part of my personal journey now, but sort of having, to, having manifested many of the kind of physical and, and, and you know, elements in our life, I, I still find myself getting too carried away in my mind sometimes, going off on, on you know, tangents or getting too stuck in certain thought patterns. And, and you know, I think awareness is probably the key to all self-growth. So when you recognize something in yourself that's frustrating you then you go and say well how can i you know how can i better that how can i overcome that how can i get in touch with that you know how can i understand that better um so i i one of the things for a long time and i remember this through my many depressed and struggled years because you know is that we needed different resets so you know using education was one for me where i could just put my headphones on or you know and and listen to a whole lot of different types of speakers or you know sometimes explore new stuff and and um, that always sort of, you know, it could take me out of any kind of negative space and put me in a, in a much better space. Um, friends, I, I have certain friends. I have like, I have dumb friends and inspirational friends, you know, like, like the, they're, they're often together now, but the dumb friends are sometimes, you really just need to kind of let go of stuff. Yeah. And um, I actually had a friend uh, years ago, his name is Bruce, and he used to do this with his wife, apparently, with it. If he came home in this really bad space, you know, she would immediately like, like they would, you could recognize it in each other. And she'd say, wait, wait, because he would walk through the door, bitching and moaning about stuff. And he would go, she would go and pick up this, this imaginary bucket and she'd come and say, right, here's the bucket. Or sometimes she'd say to him, or he would say to her, like, do you need the bucket? Yeah, I need the bucket. And then she'd like hold the bucket and say, go. And he would just be able to spew out all this, whatever, the crap of the day that was frustrating so much and she would just keep asking are you done are you done are you done until it was there you know and, and not in a, any kind of like um sarcastic or silly way but it's because i truly believe in this sometimes yeah. and then they would hold the bucket together the imaginary bucket walk to the window open the window and toss it out the window now i must admit i've i've had friends that are really good at that like they can listen and you can just dump and they will encourage you to dump and support you um, I don't think I've always reciprocated it brilliantly because I want to fix things. So the minute somebody starts to tell me there's a problem, Ryan's like, oh, but you know, you could do this. And what about this? And oh, don't be silly, you, could, you know, and that's not what we want sometimes. So I do think um, there's many exercises, there's clearing exercises, there's things like that you can create yourself, especially with loved ones and people that care for you. And it's an absolute blessing to have somebody that allows you to do that. You know, my current partner in life, she's, I mean, she's also like me, a fixer. We're both kind of crazy, but I can dump. And you know, like, and like, that's really helpful sometimes, and vice versa. And and I think that you know, releasing just that stuff, and then being able to kind of start from that space is very powerful. So there are many, many techniques. Whether you speak to a friend, whether you find out ways to you know have clearance sessions or dump all your rubbish out, or you know, it's it's funny how you can't do it in your head. You tend to circulate in your head, but when you can talk to somebody about it, you can really spew it out. So really, you know, I think for people that are struggling and you know it's so so important that don't get sucked up in all the conspiracy and negativity and all this kind of nonsense don't take everything at face value don't judge you know especially yourself just go out there knowing that it's a journey and there is a whatever your life's illustrating now there's a much better version of it and you just got to keep working towards it and those little daily techniques the little 
you know, productivity techniques to make sure you get through the stuff that's weighing you down, that you take control of things, that you don't feel overwhelmed. And again, I, I can tell you some, but there's so much literature. And Brian Tracy, Eat That Frog, probably one of the, you know, the greatest books on personal productivity yeah. ever. That is so critical. So you don't get overwhelmed, keeping your mind in the right place. And it's okay. You know, one of the things I had to do, Chris, just give myself permission to feel like crap sometimes. <laughs> if you give yourself permission to have a bad day, it ends up being a bad hour instead of a bad day. Yeah, right. You but if you go. don't, you're having a bad day, you have a bad week, you have a bad year. So yeah, there's so many different things. Really cool. I, as I knew from the beginning when I started talking, we could talk for a couple hours, but that's not realistic today. <laughs> um, Brian, how can, obviously, you help. You know, loads of people. So a couple things. How can these guys reach you? Um, what do you have for programs? That because when I'm listening to a podcast, I'm going, okay, how can I how can I get some of that? So so share anything you want. Well, you know, how can they reach you? What does it look like? So um realsummits.com is probably the best place to go to see whatever the latest summit is that's coming out. So every six odd weeks we do a major summit. Um, as I'm talking to you now, the next one's coming in June and uh, it's got, you know, Mel Robbins and Les Brown and Deepak Chopra and a whole lot of people on it, plus some just incredible, incredible teachers from all over the world. And you'll be joining, you know, 40,000 people from 150 countries. And that's, I'm just doing what I absolutely love now, just yeah. seeing people that have never seen teachers before learning from them for the first time is what I absolutely thrive on. Um, from my journey perspective, I don't teach as much, but there's something called the Real Entrepreneur, and I think we've just launched the Real Entrepreneur Academy partnership with someone where I'm going to be teaching more, mainly around the entrepreneurial element in my journey. Um, but you will see me occasionally in the summits, and you'll see Dr. John Martini, you'll see Brian Tracy, you'll see just about everyone we've spoken about uh, in those kind of spaces. Um, so yeah, I, I am, you know, just just come participate, the 100% free, come and find out who gets you going, you know, yeah. who, who yeah. wakes you up and then walk, walk the journey with them, whether you buy their books, whether you do a program with them, with you, whether you just watch them on YouTube, whatever the, the journey might be. Um, but the best place to start at this point is realsummits.com. That'll pretty much always tell you whatever the next summit is that's coming and when it's happening. Love it. Real summits with an S dot com, right? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. All right. Love it. Love it. Love it. I have one question. We'll wrap up with this. And it just came to mind literally just now because you, you get some cool people you, you rub elbows with. Is there someone you'd love to meet that you haven't yet? And, and why in its simplest form, we'll wrap up with that. <laughs> Is there someone I'd love to meet that I haven't? Um, I think I'm being quite blessed to have somehow found ways to rub shoulders with, with people that have inspired me over, over the years. Uh, obviously being South African, there was the great Nelson Mandela, who had the privilege of being in the presence of. And I must tell you, he was a man that I was actually in a hotel and he walked in. Uh, I didn't know he was there. I was there to meet somebody else. And, and I felt this energy. You know, that's the kind of man he was. He was just truly a profound human being because he had just walked in up in the balcony. And I suddenly noticed there's all these people around. They're all looking up and I look up and there was, you know, the great Nelson Mandela. And um, I think that you didn't necessarily have to meet him to, to just sort of feel his energy and understand him as a whole. Um, right now, I think I look at life and I go, who am I blessed to meet each day? And when you're on a journey and in flow, you actually get blown away by the opportunity of who you get to meet yeah. on a regular yeah. basis. And so rather than necessarily saying there's somebody specifically, um, you know, I want to meet, I just actually look forward to who, who I get the privilege of meeting on the journey um, and connecting with as a whole, because, um, yeah, it's been a real blessing. That's such a cool answer because my wife knows I'll, I'll like, when I meet someone like you, I'll say, okay, let's trace that back. How do we meet? How, you know, what happened from that? And just some really cool things come out of that when you stay in flow. I love it. I, what a cool way to wrap up. I'll put your links in the uh, show notes, Brian, super, super appreciative of your visit with us and your chat with us. And I know the wicked smart community is. So thank you very much. No, it's been an absolute pleasure, Chris. Thank you. <laughs>